historically, uh, surveys that really try to sort of look at the galaxy as a whole haven't really been done for a long time because it's a big part of the sky. And we've exploited a window of opportunity where we had the right telescope and more crucially, we could build a very advanced camera that had enough pixels that we could really say, we aren't, we're simply going to systematically do the whole plane of the galaxy. And even then, it would still take a lot of time, but we, could, we, could, we had the technology, if you like, to do so. And by doing this, we really have made, um, you know, this has been a few decades since there has been a, an atlas of this kind. And it's, um, it's, it's sort of factors of thousands more sensitive than the previous one. So we, we are really sort of, um, um, hopefully, uh, we're, we're covering a whole new ground in understanding um, the, the Mil our own Milky Way and through that, of course, understanding how, how stars form and how other galaxies evolve. So the project is large. It requires a large amount of telescope time, so it consists of an international collaboration, um, although the, the dominant part is, uh, is a collection of UK university. And really the idea is that uh, Warwick and other UK universities join forces and join their expertises and interests uh, and, and set up uh, this, uh, this team that competed for this time, that made it possible to do such a very intensive atlas, which requires um, almost a year of telescope time, which is otherwise very difficult to get. So Warwick, um, uh, with the help of everyone else in the team, actually focuses on sort of phase two, if you like, that now we have this very detailed atlas, which contains a couple of hundred million of objects that we are trying to find out which of these uh, are likely of interest for follow-up. And we use uh, follow-up telescopes. So we're not done with just making the atlas. We actually do a lot, make a lot of effort in, in making additional observations, both with images and with something that we call spectroscopy to actually study the interesting subset of all these hundreds of millions of objects that are in our atlas in more detail. What we use is a, a camera, a very sophisticated digital camera. It has 32 megapixels, which is indeed a lot larger than your typical digital camera, but also uses very sophisticated, sensitive, cooled cameras. And it's attached to a telescope that is located on top of a mountain in the Canary Isles on the island of La Palma. And just as an illustration here, we really have a very small uh, scaled-down version of that. The, the, the telescope that we have on La Palma has a two and a half meter diameter mirror that serves as the collecting light. And on the back of it is this very sensitive CCD camera. And we point that telescope right across the galaxy to get our digital atlas in very high quality and depth. The galaxy is such a remarkable uh, environment, really. Our, our images are just sort of sharpening up the detail. And it just shows that there is a remarkable range of conditions still where stars are being formed, where stars are dying and exploding. And um, it's really because of the high quality of the optics of the telescope and the sensitivity of the camera that records these images. This is a, a, part, a zoom in, actually, of a region of gas and dust in the Milky Way. Uh, what we don't see here are some of the young hot stars that sit towards the lower right here that uh, actually have blown away a lot of this dust and gas and sweep, swept it up. And you see here sort of dust uh, condensations in the foreground uh, looking dark, and as well as some ionized gas lighting up in, in light here uh, in contrast. So what we're seeing here is that there's still a lot of uh, dust and gas around in the Milky Way, and, and there's thousands of solar masses of gas here, just even in this tiny fraction of it, that could support the formation of you know, lots of new and stars. And so star formation is ongoing in our, in our Milky Way. Continuously stars are born and die. Uh, we are just sort of covering as much of the Milky Way as we can. These are the absolutely most stunning pictures that have been done on that large scale that I've seen so far. I find it just impressive how beautiful parts of the sky can be um, to our human eye. And on the scientific side, it's impressive, it's very impressive to what level of detail these digital images that we receive now can resolve the structure of the Milky Way and the properties of individual stars that we look at. And that's also why it has generated quite a bit of interest from the community to get these pictures released to the wider public. Since about two years, we have started to invest a lot of effort in follow-up observations and follow-up studies of individual objects identified in this new survey. And that's work which we hope will keep on going for the next five or 10 years, because it's a treasure chest, basically, and there are lots of individual gems inside, which the um, additional attention, additional observations. We have released 
of the other 60% of the total survey. There are at the moment, right, right in this moment as we stand here, there are observations going on to finish in, to fill in gaps in the survey that we have. And we expect that that will be finished within the next 12 to 18 months. By that time, the whole map will be complete and released in its entirety to the public. This data is now available through a web interface for anyone really to download and do with both scientists and non-scientists. And it's just our way of sort of um, making sure that the project that we did, which we did maybe initially mainly for our own scientific reasons, uh, goes beyond that. And it's sort of a, a legacy project for the telescope in La Palma because it used a lot of its time. And the sort of, um, we hope that, of course, it will be many years still that people will use this data and, and new results will come from it.